Some days that light is just too bright. This is one of those days. What's up everyone? Honest review here of the Deep Cool Captain 240EX. Now the 120EX, which is a 120 millimeter radiator variant, also applies in this case. Now it's not to say that my reviews, my other reviews aren't honest. I just call things like I see them. I've had a lot of experience with these particular AIOs, also with NZXT AIOs, Corsair AIOs. They all have about the same reliability. We're gonna talk about quality control. I know you're kind of worried about Deep Cool, which is a brand that's not as big. Let's be honest, as Corsair or NZXT or any of the other big AIO companies out there. We're going to talk about that, why I like this more than any of the other AIOs out there, and where you can find it. Now, one of the captain's big selling points for me, the fact that you can buy it in a white variant. You guys all know I am with white PCs. The fact that you can shine any RGB color you want at a white surface, and it takes on that color scheme. So having a white PC means that you can pretty much have any color scheme you want going on inside that white build. Now, the Captain 240EX comes in a black and red variant, but also in a white variant. So not only are the fans themselves white, we'll talk about the fans here shortly, but also the radiator itself and the CPU block. So you have a full-on white color scheme going on here. If you're looking to build any white PC, period, this is probably the AIO for you, at least in the looks department. Now, let's be honest about fans here for a second. If you purchased a case from any retailer anywhere in the world within the last year or so and paid under 100 US dollars equivalent, I would bet my lunch money that the fans included in those cases were not up to par. I bet you they were pretty crappy, to be honest. And that's because you buy the case for the case. You don't buy the case for the fans. So there's really no incentive for companies to throw in expensive fans because they know that's not why you're buying the case. It might be an extra selling point, but it's not really going to sway you one way or the other. But in the case of AIOs, you want good fans. One of the reasons why you buy one in the first place is to not have to hear those loud fans churning anytime you start up a game. An AIO will solve a lot of that if you calibrate your fan curves accordingly. Now, I have received a few from companies that had not so great fans, and I can say that the fans from Deepcool included with the Captain 240 and 120EXs are satisfactory. They're not the greatest. They're not the crappiest. I would say that they're somewhere in the middle. I'd give them a C plus, maybe a B minus. They get especially loud past about 50 to 60% RPM, but being that you're cooling your CPU with a liquid, it's not probably going to be an issue if you're not overclocking your CPU to some insane frequency. Another great thing about these fans, four pins. A lot of companies will cheap out and include three pin fans. I'm not a fan of those fans. I prefer four pins because it allows for extra control. PWM support, which is what the fourth pin gives you, uh, allows for basically a wider range of RPM settings, meaning that you can turn your fans way down and also turn them way up need be. So if you're calibrating your fans in your BIOS, having that PWM support is a good thing because you can really lower those settings without dropping voltage to a point where the fan won't even turn on. Now, a few of you were asking where on earth they put the pumps in AIOs. Typically, it'll be in the CPU block. It won't be above the rad fins. That wouldn't really make much sense. It's There's really nowhere else it could be. Uh, but right above the CPU block, you can see we have a copper base here with pre-applied thermal paste. That's a good sign. Uh, you'll find the pump. It provides decent cooling. This is a little under what the NZXT Kraken X62 will bring you, but that's a 280 millimeter rad. I was still able to get my i7-6700K to 4.6 gigahertz on this particular AIO, so you're, you're still going to have excellent overclocking headroom. On a personal note, I'm glad this only requires one connection. The NZXT Kraken 62 has a plethora of wires streaming from it. You have to cable manage all of that if you want it to look semi-decent, otherwise you'll just have black wires kind of flying everywhere on top of your motherboard. But in this case, only a single three pin fan header that's perfectly fine three pins is okay for a pump because typically you want that running uh, somewhere around full speed anyway on the top of the block depending on which color scheme you opt for you'll either have in this case a white pulsing LED or a red pulsing LED to kind of fit with your color scheme obviously if you're going with the black uh, variant then you might want to have something red in your case to complement that red LED in this case white pretty much matches everything unless you know nothing else in your system is white in which case this would really stand out but I don't know if that would look all that bad to be completely honest with you two other things regarding this cooler's flexibility well in one sense of the word the first being that there is no company logo or text anywhere atop the CPU block that's good for those who are looking to route this excess tubing atop the case let's say you have a case that's pretty short and you have all this extra tubing here instead of running it down just above your graphics card which let's admit looks a little goofy you can run it on top and it'll pretty much be hidden from view and by doing so you've kind of minimalized the the look of your case you haven't got these random tubes running anywhere and you don't have any upside down text or anything that's sideways you know if you have like an NZXT Kraken X62 let's say the NZXT logos 
oriented in one direction. You can't rotate that thing any other way unless you are okay with crooked or upside down text. And that's just a pet peeve that a few people have. In this case, you don't have to worry about that one bit. The second flexible feature is actually a bad thing for especially large cases like full size towers. If you wanna use a 240 AIO in that kind of case, this is probably not the case of the AIO for you. I say that because the piping itself is not very long. This was designed for mid-size and ITX cases. You'll find that the NZXD Kraken X62, I keep using that as like my standard because that's still a really good AIO. It's just, there are things about this cooler that suit my needs personally. But that cooler's uh, CPU block actually extends a few inches further, which means that you'll have extra compatibility. In that case, you might not be able to reach your CPU in an especially large case if you want to orient, you know, if you want to orient this block any which way. That's actually not very long at all. By the way, if you're wondering about ease of installation, this is one of the simplest processes to follow. You even have nice pictures here that'll help you through the process. And if you're wondering about AM4 support for Ryzen CPU owners, Deep Cool Captain 240 EXs now come with AM4 support. That's something they wanted to make sure that I touched on, that you have that support out of the box now. Just make sure that you're not buying a really old unit from a friend. That one won't come with it, but because AM4 is now released, Deep Cool has updated it, and you can use 240 and 120 EXs with Ryzen platforms. Oh, what the heck? You actually get a four fan fan hub with the Captain 240 EX. That's pretty cool. I think I might have thrown all of mine away in the past. I didn't know that this was in the box. Now, lastly, I want to talk about quality control reliability of this product. It's a slippery slope because I can only speak from my personal experience. I haven't had a single AIO fail. Granted, Deepcool has sent me four of them. I purchased two on my own from Newegg and Amazon, so those were okay too, and the ones that I assume Deepcool sent were checked beforehand to make sure that they weren't dead on arrival. But there are, and I cannot ignore this, several reviews saying that these coolers have failed within a month or so or were just dead out of the box. But I want you to take those negative reviews with a small grain of salt. I'm not saying that because Deepcool is a sponsor, or because they paid me in this video. They didn't, by the way. This is just me doing a review on the Captain 240 and 120EXs because many of you have asked about them. I use them quite a bit. What I will say, though, with the negative reviews, they're motivated. Think about it. If you spend 100 bucks on a product and it doesn't work as advertised, you're going to be pretty pissed off. You're going to want to go write a review on whatever website that you purchased the, the product from. But if the product works as advertised and it you know does what you expect it to do, you're probably not going to be motivated to hop back onto that site and write a decent review. So the people who write negative reviews are motivated to do so, and I'm glad that they do. It lets us know that there are potential issues. But the positive reviews you can't really count on unless they just, you know, unless those people were blown away by the product's, uh, you know, performance. And this is just a 240 millimeter millimeter AIO. It's nothing really special about it other than the fact that it looks pretty darn cool. Worst case, you purchase the product from a reputable vendor. I recommend a Newegg or Amazon for the US because you can return those products within X amount of days if they do fail and they'll refund your money or they'll send you another one. And that's pretty much it. Your CPU temps will rise and rise until your computer turns off, which is what it's supposed to do when t safe temps are exceeded. Uh, and then you can just get your money back or try something else or try the same cooler over again. But I would not recommend this product if I was uncertain at all about its potential. I do think that a majority of you will uh, be very impressed by the cooler, regardless of which size you go for, the 120 or the 240. I do think that the 240 is worth it. It's more expensive, but it's not double the price. So it's like buy one, get one 25% off or whatever. Speaking of which, both the Captain 240EX and the Captain 120EX are linked in this video's description, along with their red and white variants. Check those out. If you have one, let me know what you think about it. If you had issues, also let me know. I'd like to keep track of all of those and see what we can do on Deepcool's side to sort out those issues. They're a very good company, very honest, very reputable. They're just trying to find their place in the current market. And I'd say with the Captain 240EX, they literally hit the nail on the head. This is a very good AIO for a very good price. That's why it's my personal AIO of choice. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.